Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Millie Automotive and today I'm going to be very honest about this Peugeot 308 SW which is basically their term for an estate. Now Peugeot has never been a car that appeals to me really. I would always go for a German product. However, the 308 estate has been catching my eye for a while. I keep seeing them on the road and thinking that is a really good looking car. Now, I asked Peugeot if I could have one for a week to test and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. There's things I've liked and there's things I've not liked. So let's go have a look around it and see how we get on. This is the 1.6 plug-in hybrid with a range of 35 miles. We've got 180 brake horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque with a 0 to 62 time in 7.7 .7 seconds through its eight speed automatic gearbox. Total on the road cost is just under 42,000 pounds. As this is a GT line, we get these 18 inch alloy wheels. Now, I don't like the aero blade style, but I'll leave that to you. Let me know in the comments. You also get full LED matrix headlights in this fang design, which is very modern. I think the overall look of the car at the front looks very sleek. I like the indentations in the bonnet. I'm not that big of a fan of the grille, but I quite like the badge. I'm not mad at that. And I know quite a few people don't like it. I really like the way the back of this car looks. I think it's quite chunky looking. There's a lot to it. Some people have said it might be slightly too overstyled, but I think it quite works. It kind of reminds me of like a transformer. And I know as a kid, I definitely would have loved seeing this on the road. And I love seeing it on the road now. I, I looked at it, I saw them on the road and thought they are good looking cars. Definitely a personal preference though. So I'm a fan of these 3D lights at the back, very modern, and the spoiler as well. But my only negative with it, Pip, is that there's no electric tailgate. Now in this day and age, I just feel like it should be standard on most cars now, especially with the rising cost of them. And it really does help with everyday life. We have a 548 litre boot, which I think is pretty impressive for a car of this size. This is more three series size, it's not five series. So this is a much bigger boot than my estate. And this would be super practical in everyday life. You could definitely fit both a pram and the dog in here. And with it being a hybrid, it doesn't skimp too much on losing boot space because of the battery. We've still got a really good boot space. Let's talk about the interior. So I think it's quite a nice place to be. It's very futuristic. But if you're not used to Peugeots like me, I think it would take a bit of time to get used to because the seating position with the steering wheel and the instruments is really strange to me. So the steering wheel is below the instrument cluster. Now, apparently this is a Peugeot thing and that is fair enough. I love cars that have their own quirk on take on things, but it's taken me quite a long time to get used to this week. Now I feel like I'm used to it now, but the steering wheel just feels so tiny. Like it feels like it's too small for the size of the car. And some people might really like that. But for me, I'm not that big of a fan of it. Now it's sort of like a flat bottom steering wheel on both sides, which I actually do like. And I like that there's no spokes in the wheel. So you can sort of grip it. That feels nice and sporty. We also have physical buttons on the steering wheels for all of your controls. Now, something I am a massive fan of is when you put it into sport, everything turns into this sort of lime green colour, which I think just changes the whole atmosphere in the car. I think it really goes with the styling and it just looks really modern and sporty. What do you guys think? The infotainment screen is really easy to use and it's really high quality on the graphics as well. I don't like this sort of stripe that appears when you click through to different sections. It feels more like a lag and I kind of wish it wasn't there personally. The climate control is easy to use but you have to click through to the screen which is slightly annoying. Overall the infotainment system is really easily adaptable and you can put shortcuts to turn things off which is nice. And Apple CarPlay works very well which I know we use most of the time. The reversing camera is fantastic, the quality is amazing and it also moves as you move the wheel which is really handy and I haven't actually seen in a car before. The graphics are super high quality and I think this is just a really useful feature. Now it is an optional extra but I think it's definitely worth it. I will say overall the quality has really impressed me. There's none of that sort of creaky plastic anywhere. Everything feels really nice and really premium. 
The seats are very comfortable in the back, but unfortunately you don't get that much room because it's almost like a shooting break style. And also you've got the massive boots. So I'd say for older children, you may struggle with the space in the back. I'm five foot nine and I definitely didn't have much room at all. On to the all important drive of this car. Now, first things first, I'm gonna talk about the absolutely comfiest seat I think I've ever been in in a car. I, it feels like I'm in an armchair, it reminds me of older cars like I have a Mark II Golf and when I sit in those seats it's like being in an armchair they're so padded and comfortable and these really are padded and comfortable and the leatherette leather is quite soft and it's really nice actually um, the only grievance with it in terms of interior styling is the steering wheel is very small like I've said and it's really weird when you're driving now on the road it's very comfortable it's quite harsh over bumps but the suspension when you're actually driving is quite smooth and it's also quite quiet in here as well you don't have a lot of engine noise obviously as it's a plug-in hybrid now for me i sort of treated this car as just a petrol car because it's not the best plug-in hybrid i've been in in all in my honest opinion um so it doesn't self-charge and also I may be wrong here, but when you're driving, there's no option to take it out of electric if you want to preserve the electric for some reason. So if you've got that charge, the car will just use it and it doesn't use much of it. It's claimed to be 35 miles, but I've been getting closer to about 25 miles when it's plugged in and it's almost like, what is the point? Um, for me, I mean, it wouldn't. I haven't used the electric because there's no point really. I charged out once and then it went so fast. I was like, okay, it's a bit, it's a bit of a tricky one really. I mean, if you're going on a short journey to work and it's five, ten miles each way, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's fine. I can just use a bit of electric, can't I? But you get about four hundred miles on a tank and it's not bad it's got quite good mass per gallon yeah you get about 400 miles on a tank do you know what though people are looking at this car someone just looks at it people are like oh that looks nice because it is a, actually a really good looking car on the road and that is what i noticed about it when i first inquired to peugeot to drive one of these i, I just thought i was like wow i don't think i've ever noticed a peugeot on the road before but there's just something about this and i know the styling's quite out there but i really like the look of it i like that it's a little bit different i like that it stands out and it's got sharp lines and it's it's just really nice also the color is fabulous i like the color a lot just don't like those ugly wheels i'd be quite happy doing very long journeys in this car how does it feel to drive is it sharp enough is it po is this car pokey enough I definitely think it is. So 0 to 62 time is 7.7 .7 seconds. I don't think that's bad at all. And it definitely feels pokey enough every day. It does have this very strange thing that when you come to a junction, like I just did, and you brake, it sort of tries to stop itself for you. And then it takes a bit of time to then recharge. So I've been it around about a couple of times and I've slowed down, but I haven't broke fully. And then it's sort of been like, it's gotten a bit luggy and it's been like, oh wait, what are we doing? And then it's suddenly like, oh, okay, we're going. So it takes, it's got a bit of hesitation with it. And my other half used to have a Toyota Corolla uh, estate and that was a hybrid and that used to do it as well. But I don't know if there's any connection to that. But so talking on the note of the Toyota thing. So this Corolla was a few years old. I think it was a 21 plate and it definitely, this feels a lot more luxurious. The quality of it, I don't really have any grievances with the quality. It's very plush inside, although it's not sort of real leather everywhere, as you'd expect, everything's really good quality, which has really surprised me. And it surprised me with the Clio I had recently as well, because I've never actually really driven sort of French cars. But I'm, I've just been so surprised by the quality in here, even down to opening the doors and shutting the doors. It sort of, it feels heavy. The car is made well um, and it just is a really nice place to be. I think this would be a really good family car for someone that has younger children and needs a bigger boot or someone that's doing a lot of daily driving. 
um, on motorways because it's just really refined, really nice, and definitely quick enough for everyday driving. Um, it's definitely not slow. And I have really enjoyed driving in sport most of the time because I like the green dials. I just think it changes the car so much and adds a bit of personality to it. This car has personality and I like that it's a bit different. It's quite expensive for what it is, I won't lie. I do think the price is a little bit expensive, but aren't all cars expensive now? I think every car I've got in recently, I've thought, that's quite expensive. It seems to be becoming the norm of just having expensive cars unfortunately for us it really is unfortunate but i always thought that peugeots were a bit fugly an older one just went past me and it just has absolutely does absolutely nothing for me and i never thought the day would come where i actually am enjoying being in a peugeot and this is me being completely honest i'm being completely honest here um no hate towards peugeots it's just personal preference but i'm i've been thoroughly surprised by this car really enjoyed it there's obviously things that are not perfect but is any car perfect i think at the end of the day yeah, another one see sort of 2012 era of persians it's really ugly but this is just i just feel like they've leveled up they've stepped up there are so many fantastic options on the market now it really is tricky to choose which one now i will say if you're going for one of these, I would definitely try a Skoda Octavia estate as well because they do share their similarities. Um, so definitely a good option for you to try as well. But like I always say, it's down to personal preference, which a lot of people get quite angry about when you share an opinion online. I always try and say it's personal preference because people get very cross. Are we ready for Peugeot Power? Peugeot has power and for something that's only got 180 brakes I'm quite pleased with how it's driving actually. Final verdict on the Peugeot 308. I'm really glad I had the opportunity to drive this this week and it's definitely filled an itch of driving a Peugeot for the first time. Now overall I think this would be a great daily for someone that's doing quite long distances because it's super comfortable. The ride and the seats they really pull you in but they're super squidgy and comfy as well. Now my only issue is the engine. Now obviously with it being plug-in hybrid I don't feel like as a daily the electric would have that much use unless you were doing very short journeys. Now I definitely think it would be good to try out a petrol or diesel or even the fully electric version of this but it's great that we have so much choice with the different engines what do you guys think of the peugeot can you get over the steering wheel that's my one thing i don't know if i could get over the seating position with the steering wheel it definitely takes some time to get used to thank you guys for watching and let me know if there's any more cars you want to see on the channel don't forget to like comment and subscribe and all that shebang and i'll see you in the next video bye